So this is a continuation of page two. Uh, we're going to look at this a little bit separately because this was one of the problems that we actually used as notes. So you should already hopefully be pretty familiar with this. Um, let's take a look at the scenario. So we've got somebody, Bruce here, that's running at three meters per second. He's 55 kilograms and he ends up colliding with Biff who's 75 kilograms who's running at 9 meters per second in the opposite direction. So opposite direction is a big deal that we'll take a look at in a moment. Upon collision, Biff continues to travel forward. Bruce is knocked backwards. So we know that this is an elastic collision because Bruce and Biff are separate to begin with. They've got separate momenta. And then to end with, they end up bouncing off each other and they're still considered two separate objects at that point. They're not traveling together or anything like that. So we've got an elastic collision happening here. All right, so um, we know that Bruce is 55 kilograms, so that's why I have 55 kilograms for Bruce to begin with and to end with. We know that he's not losing mass or anything like that, so it makes sense to, to use 55 kilograms for both of those. Let me take a look at Biff. He is 75 kilograms, so that's why I have 75 kilograms for my mass for Biff to begin with and then, of course, to end with as well. I've also got 75 kilograms for Biff there because he doesn't lose or gain any mass. It wouldn't make much much sense if he did. All right, so we know that Bruce is running in one direction. So I just picked this direction to be positive. Um, he ends up colliding with Biff, who's traveling 9 meters per second in the other direction. So that in the other direction... That's a big deal. We know that he's going the opposite direction. And remember, for um, for velocity, a negative doesn't mean that we're slowing down. It means that we're traveling in the opposite direction. So that's why that negative is here for my um, velocity for Biff. Negative 9 meters per second. 9 meters per second because that's how fast he's traveling. Negative because it's opposite direction of Bruce. And remember, like the other problems, we could have chosen to call Bruce's original direction negative, which would have meant Biff's direction would be positive then. The negative and positive would just mean different things to different people at that point, but I just recommend that you keep it consistent in your own mind as you're going through these problems. Make it easy. Just call going to the right or going forward positive, going to the left. Call it negative, and then um, you'll always be on the, on the right path there. So then it says that upon collision, Biff continues to travel forward. Well, we've got to be careful because Biff is traveling this way to begin with. He's traveling leftwards um, in our diagram here, which means if he's continuing to travel forward, to him, left is forward. To us, it looks backwards from Bruce, but to him, it's still the same direction, so it's still negative. So that's what we got to be careful with. So yes, it does say that it's forward, but we've got to keep it in relation to what Biff's forward is, not what our forward is. Uh, we kind of have to put ourselves in his position. So then it asks us, how fast is Bruce knocked backwards? Um, so Bruce, we know that he's being knocked backwards. Well, to begin with, he's going to the right, so that means to end with, he should be going to the, the left. So what that tells us is that in the end, we should come out with a negative answer. It kind of gives us a little bit of a ballpark estimate of what we should be at. If we do come out with a positive, we know that it's not really following the scenario, so we'd have to go back and check our work somewhere. So let's see if that um, if that happens. So now we've got everything plugged into our formula. Go ahead and do your little sub steps here. So 55 times 3 gives me that 165. 75 times negative 9 gives me this. 55b over here, and then 75 times 2 is 150, and that's negative 2 though, so it's negative 150. All right, at that point, go ahead and combine your like terms, 165 plus negative 675, which is the same thing as 165 minus 675, gives us negative 510. And I know I'm going kind of fast here, and you can always slow down the video if you need to. Make my voice sound all, all weird and, and, and low anyway. Um, and then on the other side of things, we can't combine like terms. 55V plus negative 150 doesn't do anything for us, so we've got to get rid of the 150 because we want to try to get V by itself, so get rid of everything um, that's that's not associated with V to begin with. So negative 150, well that means we've got to add 150 if we want to get this side to cancel. And then just like anything in algebra, if I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other side. All right. 
So negative 510 plus 150 gives me negative 360. On this side, I'm left with 55V, so I'm just dropping that down here. And then at this point, again, think um, not do I divide this by this, or 55 by 360. Think of it as how do I get V by itself. V is currently being multiplied by 55, so we've got to do the opposite of that. So divide by 55, that's what I have in blue here. If I do it to one side just like before, I've got to do it to the other side. So we end up getting our, our uh, 55s to cancel out. We're left over with V on one side, so it's by itself. And then on the other side of things, I have negative 360 divided by 55, which is negative 6.54 meters per second. And then just like anything, you don't want to just finish here. You want to say, you know, does this does this make sense in relation to what the problem's asking? Does the number make sense in relation to all these other all these other numbers? Um, and does this does this number in fact check out? All right, so 6.54 meters per second, all right, in the in the negative direction. So does it does it make sense? Well, the negative sign does because it's even it's telling us Bruce is being knocked backwards. So to begin with, he was going in the positive direction. To end with, we want him to be going in the negative direction. So that negative sign makes sense. The 6.54, does that make sense? Well, to begin with, um, Bruce is running at 3 meters per second. Biff is running at negative 9 meters per second. So nine, negative 9 meters per second, Biff's traveling pretty fast towards Bruce, and he's bigger. So it would make sense that Biff ends up slamming into Bruce, Biff should slow down, right? And he does. He slows down to negative 2 meters per second. They're going from negative 9 to negative 2. But what does that mean for Bruce then? If he ends up getting smacked, smacked into by Biff, who's a lot bigger, well, it should mean that we see a fairly large change in velocity. And going from positive 3 to negative 6.54, it's a fairly large change. It's not overwhelmingly big. I mean, we've got a velocity of 3. We've got a velocity of negative 9 here, negative 2 here, and all of our masses aren't that drastically different. So we shouldn't see a velocity that's absolutely hugely different from any of the velocities that we see up here. So 2, 3, 6.54, 9, all those velocities seem like they're within reason. If we came up with like 65.4, then we'd have to realize, okay, there's no way that he's going to change velocity that much. we got to go back and check something. All right, so then, of course, in order to make sure that you're absolutely correct, or hopefully you don't need an answer key or need to even watch these videos anymore, you can just take your negative 6.54 or any answer for that matter um, that you got on any of these problems, throw it back into the equation, make, make sure that this side equals um, this side, or at least within ballpark, and you're good to go. So I end up, when I when I go to put um, what I found for V back into the formula, I come out with negative 509.7 on one side, negative 510 on the other. Um, no, that's not exactly the same, but we've got to remember we're rounding this. So that means that we are going to be a little bit off. If I would have left this as negative 6.54 repeating, like 54, 54, 54 over and over again, then I would have come out to something that's pretty much right at negative 510, depending on how many decimals I, I went out for. So in this case, is it okay to be off by 0.3? Sure. Uh, when we're dealing with a number as large as 510, uh, 0.3 is not that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. And if you ever have an, a hard time understanding that, um, always take it back to money. You know, you have five, $510. Are you really going to complain that much if you lose $0.3? So in other words, $0.30? Cents, probably not. If you only have a dollar and you lose $0.30, cents, well, then that's a, a bigger deal. So always think about it in relation to the problem. Does it make, does it make sense for me to be off by a little bit in my check step? And in this case... It does.